Welcome to CMO CGMA operational case study for the latest pricing material. Um, the pricing material for the November 2024 and the February 2025 case name is called Back Office. So it's a company manufacturing and selling backpack. I mean, this company is quite traditional from my perspective. It's the uh, traditional manufacturing business and we need to be aware of certain issues that it may arise okay, in your actual exam. Now in my course, I'll be taking you through to the entire pricing analysis and apply it to the uh, CMOS syllabus for the operational case because the examining team of the OCS or the operational case study exam we expect you to understand all these core activity areas from A to F. Okay, so make sure that you're ready for that. So besides, I've also prepared you the pricing application notes for the back office, okay, into only 23 pages uh, with extensive summary and analysis, especially summing up from the pricing into bullet points, besides I will take you through to what may be coming up at the same time, the analysis of the uh, budget information, financial statements in your pricing material. Now, before we move any further, let's see the content, okay, from the uh, back office, which means this complete the uh, OCS pricing. Firstly, we'll talk about your role and then the company backgrounds, the echoes in the market, which means the customers, which means the market, and our company's website, because our company is called Back Office. The senior management team members, we are given quite a few of them, including the teams, and also the employee induction manual, because we need to train the employee. The company's operations, final statements analysis, I've uh, calculated quite a lot of ratios, for example, the margin and OCE and current and quick ratio and so on to you. But the information, the meetings, okay, with the senior management team, and also the tax regime, because in your CMA F1, the tax knowledge will always come up, so make sure that you're ready for that. Of course, in my case book for the operational case, I've created quite a lot of pre-learned paragraphs where you can directly learn and to apply it in this particular case, which means the back office case. Okay. Now moving on then, let's see first in your pre in your role. Firstly, you are a finance officer within the finance department. So remember, the operational case study exam would not expect you to know quite a lot of strategic or the tactical issues related to the case. Now, your main focus would be on costs, would be on helping marketing departments to determine the appropriate selling price, and in terms of decision making, so especially that you will need to consider the relevant cost analysis here. For example, whether or not we should make this product or to outsource it from the external supplier. You need to understand the working capital management, that's important. You also need to know about the IFRS and tax. Okay. So all sorts of issues that you need to understand that. And of course, in my case book, these are what I mean by the core activity A up to F, which means the costing, budgeting, and even the KPI analysis, I'll show you in a second, and the IFRS taxation, governance, and ethics, short-term decision making, and working capital management. Okay, now, uh, you are principally involved in the preparation of management accounting information, so which means the costing and budgeting, that's important. Providing information to the managers, 
and especially that we are talking about the operating statement. I mean, you need to be able to explain that. I mean, your SEMA P1 study, that there will be two methods here. Either we use absorption costing or the marginal costing principles. So assist with planning and decision making. Okay, so you need to be aware that when computing variances, it could be further split into the planning variance, which means not controllable by the management, and operational variances, which means controllable by the management. So sometimes in the actual exam, the examining team may be questioning you that why should we calculate or split the variances into the planning and operational ones? At times, you're also expected to assist with, with the preparation of a financial statement. And of course, quite a few IFRS may be quite relevant to this case, especially the IFRS 16 leases. Because we can see from the statement of cash flow in the second in this financial statement, we can see that it leases the asset. So make sure that you are ready for two particular issues. Firstly, is the general discussion of the IVR 16 leases, including the right of use asset, as well as the lease liability. So make sure uh, that you are able to explain what are the components inside and what should be the subsequent measurement for each of them. At the same time, the exemption, okay, of the IFR 16 is where we've got this more value of asset and, I mean, another situation uh, could be that it's the short-term lease. Okay, so make sure they revise this area. And also queries regarding financial reporting and other financial matters, especially that we are talking about taxes. Okay, uh, so this time the international taxation that we need to be aware of this, okay, including the discussion about the underlying tax, the withholding tax, and using a tax credit uh, in the double tax treaty environment. And how would you determine the uh, residence okay, of this business? So, so that's very important according to the OECD model. Now, moving on. Complete background. Now, Back office is a company that designs, manufactures, and markets backpack that serve as an alternative to the traditional briefcase. So, which means that the back office is not the retailer. I mean, if it is for retailer, which means that it will simply buy the product from somebody else and to resell it. But here, we do not buy from somebody else, okay, for the work in progress or something like that. Or we did not buy the finished goods at the very first start. Because we will transfer, we will transfer the raw materials into the finished goods, which means the backpack here. So it seems to me that we need to be able to be competent in these areas. For example, design manufacturers and even market it. So this brings me a question that on the exam day, that we may see a competitor emerging in the marketplace saying that the competitor, okay, um, I mean, their product may be more attractive. So we may be thinking about whether or not to keep all these functions in the house or to outsource it to somebody else. You may be given on the exam there about the exhibit, about the relevant cost analysis, uh, which means we should make or buy decision. I mean, it really depends on which day that you attend the exam. Okay, so there will be several variants of the exam. Uh, so make sure that it will cover the whole syllabus for the OCS. Now, we know that it's a manufacturer. Okay, for the first sentence. Now, the second one. The back office backpack are built to high specification and aim at 
the growing market of a hybrid workers. Now, currently, in the back office company, that we are actually using the absorption costing. Now, why not to think about to switch to ABC or activity-based costing on the exam day? And of course, with regards to the budgeting information, that we may be using the activity-based budgeting as well to support the ABC costing method. I mean, to switch from the absorption costing to ABC, you need to make sure that whether or not your overhead costs will account for uh, a significant proportion of the total cost. So usually, according to our best practice, will be more than 20% of the total costs. So you're able to switch to the to, to the activity-based costing method. This is a high specification. So uh, this means that to a certain extent, it really depends on. Uh, I mean, which group of customers the back office is serving. I mean, if you're serving the business, for example, you may find that business may be buying your uh, product, which means your backpack in bulk, but um, in smaller volume, because it's like high specification. It's very unlikely that we will use the process costing, I mean, in our company, which means in the back office companies to produce all this backpack. But instead, we may be using like uh, things like the job costing, because we need to tailor each of the client's specific uh, requests. Okay, uh, so make sure that we are ready for that. But currently, of course, we are also using a standard costing combined with the absorption costing will be quite traditional. Okay, in in our business, so we need to care about the accuracy of the costing information. Look, so uh, accuracy of costing information, that's important now. Hybrid workers, which means our uh, targeted customer group, are people who work from both home and office. Okay, workers need a portable container that can hold all the equipment they require to do the job. Okay, so which means that when we are focusing on the design, uh, I mean, when talking about the value analysis, that's important. So not only we emphasize on the importance of our brand, but at the same time, that yes, cost analysis, cost value, that's important because we need to bring down our cost, but we need to make sure that the use value here is for the hybrid workers. Okay, we can't simply focus on the design of the fancy stuff by ignoring the requests from the hybrid workers. So that's important as well. Back office is a high value brand. Okay, so high value brand, according to the value analysis in our syllabus, we are also talking about the market value, which means the selling price. Now, selling price, that's important. So when you determine the selling price in a second, according to the SIMA P1, you may be thinking about the cost approach to determine the cost first before you develop the selling price. I mean, it's absolutely fine there, but in your answer, you may also consider other non-financial indicator in this example. So this means that you can always bring that this is a high value brand, so it may justify higher selling price that we sell to those groups of customers. And this is reflected in the relatively high selling prices compared to other backpack brands. So which means that it causes a concern that if you were to sell up to very high price, that the sales volume may be affected as a result. So it is reflected in a SIMA P1 that sales volume variance analysis, you need to consider that. Because even though perhaps the selling price variance is favorable, perhaps the sales volume variance is adverse in the end. 
So we need to balance the effect out to see uh, which is more beneficial to the business as a result of it. Now, uh, currently, that our company sells products through the website and selected retail stores. Now, if I were to sell my products via our own website, which means this is like the direct marketing. I mean, direct marketing, of course, we can cut the middleman. We don't really have to pay commission to the middleman. But we all need to think about nowadays, because it's so competitive in the marketplace, especially online sales, you will need to uh, invest quite a lot of traffic cost related to it. I mean, from my perspective, the marketing stuff will always be linked, according to my experience in the OCS, linked with the ZBB budgeting method in the SIMA P1. So you need to understand how ZBB works, okay? So you need to determine the decision packages. You need to justify the cost and benefit of each of the decision package before you rank these decision packages with the resources that you've got. So that's important. And also the selected retail stores. Okay, it seems to me that there are also our customers as well. Don't just to be assuming that the hybrid workers are our sole customer group. You're wrong. Because we have got the retail stores. Okay, so we sold our backpack to the retail store. It's up to the retail store to sell them to the final customer. So we need to care about and monitor quite a few ratios, I mean, in financial terms. So for example, the receivable stays, especially that we need to be caring about that. The company is based in Highland. I mean, it's a fake country in the OCS exam. The reason is we try to avoid political issues. Now, but to my mind, that these countries like Italy is a country in Western group which has the H dollar as its currency. Always be a case, this is a fake currency. You don't really have to do extensive or additional research about, I mean, the currency value, comparing with the dollar value, you don't really have to do that. But just to move on. Now, as we can see uh, from the case study exam, in my pre-learned paragraph note, which means our case note, as you can see, you will need to achieve 80 marks, three hours exam, and four questions. So make sure that you are ready. I mean, in passing the OCS, it will be relatively straightforward if you follow my pace. Because firstly, I will summarize them to analyze the pre-scene such as this using this way. Because don't forget, you are at the operational level. It's not the managerial or the management level. or even the strategic level, you don't really have to know too much about the uh, case information uh, except that you are given uh, the pre seen information in front of you. Okay, so that's very, very important. Now, now let's move on to the second paragraph. I mean, this company founded many years ago, it seems to me nine years ago, okay, by Arlo James Wright. Okay, so it really depends on how you run the business. So let's see then. Arlo is a product designer by trade. I mean, apart from teaching the SIMA OCS exam, uh, I also provide consultancy services to a range of uh, small and medium-sized entities. I found that most of our founders uh, are associated with the product design because if, don't, if you don't know about the product or services that you provide quite well, you can't really succeed in this market. Now, Arlo was previously employed as a chief designer for a leading hiking backpack brand. Okay, so it seems to me that it brings me an issue about corporate governance. Now, how about the uh, governance structure within this business, whether or not we should introduce additional non-executive directors 
with diverse background, for example, um, the designer for other companies, so to inject the fresh blood to our company. While working for this company, he became expert in ergonomic backpack design, technical textiles, and the backpack manufacturing process. Okay, it seems to me that when we are looking at the performance analysis later on related to these KPIs that, I mean, if I'm the consultant, so the back office or even I'm the staff when reviewing the KPIs, I would reasonably expect the low wastage rate or errors, okay, inside our business because we've got an expert who oversees uh, the key activity within our business. This expertise and other skills were seamlessly transferred to the starter company when our low realized that there was a gap in the business market for a backpack that incorporated style, good interior functionality and comfort being worn. So it seems to me that because later on we will see that we have got different products. I mean, more than one product inside our business. I mean, on the exam day, that you may be asking about the shutdown decision, which means that on the exam day, some of the port lines are uh, running at a loss, so whether or not we should shut this down. Okay, so whether or not we should shut this down, okay, from the financial term, we need to compare if we were to shut this down, if the loss revenue is higher than the saved fixed costs, of course, we would like to keep this open. But um, if you decide to shut this down, you also need to consider the non-financial indicator. Now, when you are considering the non-financial indicator, the sort of keywords I want you to remember are those adjectives. For example, the adjectives, for example, the incorporated style, the functionality is good, it's quite comfortable. Okay, so these three are concrete reasons why you decide to keep it open, uh, because if you decide to shut this down or shut one of these down, so you may be caring about whether or not it will be in conflict, okay, with the stated characteristics of your product initially when you start up your business. So that's important that. Right, now, I think this is enough, okay, for the first section where you've got a feel for how the pre-scene uh, is looking like. So make sure that you're ready. Of course, later on in our second video, I'll be taking you through to uh, what areas may come up. And of course, in our casebook, and I will take you through to my case note, okay, related to each of the knowledge points. So for example, if you're testing about the stress testing budget, how you would write your answer, okay, in the OCS exam in order to maximise the number of marks. Right there. I'd like to stop this recording now and I look forward to seeing you in the next of our section. Bye bye. A P C accounting for your future